Hello and welcome to part 4 of the WSRR policy demonstration. This is data power and policy integration. Uh, for this you're going to need a WebSphere Data Power 5.0 box and to follow the previous three demonstrations, <coughs> although not so much the last one because that covered promotion and we're kind of shortcutting this one by taking promotion out of the story to make it a little bit more simple and less confusing for you. So we start off by logging into our data power box and uh, into our own domain. Now we're assuming here that you've already configured uh, the integration between the two sides and by that I mean you've already created the WSRR um, server definition inside data power and exchange certificates between the two servers. So here is for example the definition for my server. So you've already got the SSL proxy profile set up, username, password and the uh, correct URL here. So we're going to start by creating a web service proxy. This will be the front to your services and enable data power to enforce the policies that you attach to the objects inside the registry. So we'll start by getting a tentable name. We're working with the eligibility service, so we'll call it eligibility WSP. switch to the add WSRR subscription and start typing in our details. So it's a brand new subscription we're going for, so I'll have to call my subscriptions after the uh, files we're going to be using. That's actually eligibility service, isn't it? And I'm going to come here to data power in order to make sure I enter the correct details. It's the WSDL file that we're looking for here, that's what data power subscribes against. And it uses that to find all all the other information it needs. So we'll come down here and select WSDL docs. And it's a list of all the WSDL documents I've got in my service. Expand that for the namespace. So we need the name. Make sure you specify that it's a uh, WSDL document in there. And the namespace. You could also use the version if you needed to separate between two different versions. We'll ensure you check the box here. So they've already defined our server. We're picking automatic here so any changes in WSRR get sent down to data power and that's a critical part of this. And we'll press next now. All the other options you can leave as default. We need to create ourselves a local endpoint handler which will be an HTTP front side handler. This is the thing that allows and an HTTP connection to be used to get into the web service proxy. Again, give it a name and pick a port number. In this case, I know 66 is free, so I'm going to stick with that. Everything else I can leave as is the default. And it's important you actually press add, otherwise, it doesn't actually get added in there. You'll get an error when you press next. So all that's done now, you'll see here it says WSDL status OK and that's the important thing. If it says error, you don't want to click on that and try and look in the logs and work out what's actually gone wrong. But we can switch now to the uh, SLA policy details and expand the SLA table policy model here. And you'll be able to see what information we already have in the registry. So on port there, you'll see that the default SLA, the SLA specific to the account creation service with its consumer ID of ACSV000, and an SLD. There's no policies, that's why it says no assertions here. And that's because if you remember in one of the previous demos we actually deleted the attachment. So we'll go back in a minute and add that attachment. Also if you're following this yourself, you won't have your default SLA here because in demo one we left the um, lifecycle state of identified. We didn't actually approve that SLA. If you want to go back and make sure that you do that yourself. So we'll come back to the business space interface WSRR here and I want to show you few things that relate to what we just saw. So back in the watch list here is the SLA for the account creation consumption. And if I follow this back up eventually we'll find the uh, service version for the account creation service. Now it's the consumer identifier of ACSV000 and that's how we know that it's that that, that, that has the SLA to consume 
the eligibility service and that matches up to the, the value here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to attach our policy to the SLD. Sorry, I've got the wrong SLD there. The SLD, the eligibility service. And you'll see there's no policies to start with because it's not listed here. So we click on the pencil, scroll down to the policies. You see there's none there. And we'll add one in, which is of course my mediation policy. And it's approved. It's critical that it's approved. And we press finish. Now how this works with the automatic synchronization is that I've um, configured it previously so that every 30 seconds the scheduled task in WSRR will run. That task will check for anything it needs notifying and issue the notification. So roughly every 15 seconds you should get some notifications through. And here we can switch to the default domain. We'll just save our changes over here and look in the log and we should be able to see that notification coming in. And there it is. So here's the notification, here's the logging, the fact that it's found which web service proxy it is that matters. And then here we go, schedule a synchronization in 300 seconds. Now that's five minutes for those of you that aren't hot at maths. And it does that so in case lots and lots of changes to be made at once to avoid having to constantly keep rebuilding its stuff. So uh, I'm going to pause this demonstration now and return to you in five minutes time. So when five minutes have passed, switch back to your own domain, uh, which will bring you onto the control panel and then drill back through to navigate to the SLM, SLA policy details once more. And there's still three attachments. But what you'll notice now is on the SLD we have this policy and it echoes the information we entered back in the first demonstration. When the message count is more than four in one minute it will reject the message. If we return to the diagram I showed you in your previous demonstration, you'll remember it's over here on the right hand side that we've attached this policy. Now that's the SLD and that applies for all consumers, so it isn't just the account creation service that would be subjected to this policy, but any consumers of this service. Had we attached it here to the SLA, it would only be um, the account creation service that would be subject to that policy. And it's the, by use of the ACSV000 that account creation identifies itself. So what I'll do now is I'll actually create some traffic and, and we'll show that the fifth message in a minute gets rejected. So what I've got here is a nice little tool for calling this service. A couple of things need changing to make it have the right details. Hopefully everything should be set up correct. So we'll press the invoke button and see what happens. And we get an internal ex an, uh, internal error. But don't worry, this is exactly what I expected. Now the reason why we get this internal error is because the WSDL which we used when following the get tutorial points to an endpoint which doesn't exist. And if we switch back to uh, business space here, I can demonstrate to you why that is. Here is the endpoint of that service. It's jklhe.com. That's not a real website. There's no service there. So we need to get around that. We're going to get around that by creating a policy which will route in all cases to the actual endpoint. Now in reality you wouldn't need to do this but it's kind of a workaround by the fact that we're using off-the-shelf um, WSDL files here. So we'll switch to the overview, create a mediation policy, we'll call it my rewrite policy. We don't add any conditions because it's in all cases and the action is to route the message and we need to put in the actual endpoint there which luckily I have in my clipboard so I can just paste it in and finish now if you're remembering what we've done previously we need to go to the document and propose and approve my policy now it's in the approved state and finally of course we actually need to go and attach it to the SLD. So if we go back to the policy here, we should be able to do it this way around. And indeed we can attach it to the eligibility service. Press finish. 
Now of course once more data power has to pick it up. But I'll let you remember the little cheat here. I didn't actually wait five minutes last time. If you visit the WSDL files tab and click on OK here, we can actually hit synchronize and force it to go through rather than to wait for the five minute delay. So everything being correct now. I should have an extra policy on here. Let's refresh there. And indeed, there's a root message as well. So now when we come back to the test client, fingers crossed, everything's going to work. So we return now to the web services test client and we can uh, start to put through some messages. So that's one successful, two successful, three successful, four successful, and this fifth one should reject now. And as you can see, there we go. Indeed, it rejected from the client. And that's because it was a fifth message and the policy was set to do so. I'll just briefly take you through what we're looking at here. The top is the endpoints, so we can see it's going to a data power box. Next up is gold, and I haven't shown you where gold is, but I'll pop back and show you that is. And uh, we have here the cover value. These are just the details of the actual service itself, but they're irrelevant, they don't really do anything. So the context identifier there, it says gold. <coughs> that refers to the SLA in question. And this is the SLA. And you'll see context identifier here is blank. Now that's blank, and because it's blank, it lets everything through. So in our case, we sent gold through, but it, we allow anything because we haven't got one specified. You could actually have several SLAs in place, each with different levels of service, perhaps gold, silver, and bronze, and then different customers be treated to different service. This might be necessary if to have the same consumer consuming the same service, but for different customers at the very front end. Okay, so that concludes the data power and policy integration demo. I hope that all made sense. Thank you very much.